If you're interested in how does it work for the food situation in the army, the dining facility, the defect, the chow hall, how does that whole thing kind of work? Well, stick around because that's what I'm gonna be explaining in this video. What's up my friends? Welcome to an all new video. I'm US Army veteran Christopher Chaos and in this episode we're gonna be specifically talking about the defect, the chow hall, the dining facility, the mess hall, whatever you wanna to refer to it as. The place the soldiers go to eat lunch, breakfast, dinner, whatever. Now, if that's the type of content you're interested in, because that's what I create here on the Christopher Chaos channel, is educational information about the United States Army, and you are not currently subscribed to this channel, maybe think about clicking on that subscribe button, even click on that bell to get alerts as soon as new videos go live, to include the live streams and become a part of that awesome notification platoon. So, let's talk about the Army Dining Facility. Now, specifically, I'm talking about in garrison. I'm not talking about in the field or on a deployment, mainly just trying to let people know what is it like on the day-to-day -day basis, right? You're doing your MOS, you're doing your job, you're stationed wherever, stateside, overseas, whatever, not on a deployment, not in the field. What is that dining facility, that defect, that chow hall like? So most installations usually have several dining facilities depending on the size of that installation. They're kind of spread out throughout the installation based on the units and everything like that. So like, for example, I think Fort Carson has like four or five or something like that. Plus there's also usually one inside of the, the hospital. A little heads up, usually the hospital one is pretty, pretty good. But that will vary on the size of the installation. You have a smaller installation, you may only have one or two, but large installations usually have several. So. Who can use these dining facilities? Well, obviously soldiers can do so, whether you're active duty, National Guard or Reserve, you're allowed to use those dining facilities. Also along with that, other branches. So if you are Air Force, your Navy, whatever, and you're on an Army installation, you can still use the dining facility as well. As far as civilians, if you are a DOD ID card holder, maybe you're a contractor, DOD civilian, whatever the case is, they are also allowed to use the dining facility as well. Also with that, civilians that don't have ID cards can use the dining facility if they're accompanied by someone who is authorized to actually use that dining facility. So as an example, maybe you wanna take your mom on post to take her to lunch at the chow hall to see what it's like. Because she's accompanied by you being a soldier maybe, then sure, you can do that. Also, there are some different restrictions for officers, but I was enlisted and I usually kind of gear a lot of the content to this channel to enlisted active duty side, those kind of things. So I won't really kind of dive into how it works for officers. So the next thing you want to know is, well, when can I go to the chow hall? Well, they usually have some set hours that are pretty common at a lot of installations. Each installation may kind of vary on the times and everything like that, but typically you have like breakfast is usually around 7.30 till about nine o'clock in the morning. Usually starts at 7.30 because that's when PT ends, so they usually don't want you going to breakfast prior to when you're supposed to be at physical training. Lunch, typically around 11 or 11.30, and then that usually goes till about 1300. Dinner might flex a little bit, that might be like 1700 to 1900, but that kind of varies based on the installation. And then some installations, depending on like what's going on in that installation, what kind of units they have, what the tempo is or the work hours are for the, a lot of the units on that installation, you might have situations where they have like midnight chow, where they do have the dining facility open late at night, or even in some cases there are, might be some dining facilities that are open 24 hours, but those are a little bit more or less common. Those are really just dependent on different installations and based on if they really need that or not. Your common ones are usually open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The dining facilities are also open on the weekends, so it's actually seven days a week. They sometimes have different hours during the weekends as well as holidays as well. There may also be some cases where some chow halls may close either on a weekend or a holiday, but there will still be another chow hall somewhere nearby that is still open. So they're not gonna close all the chow halls on a holiday or on a weekend or anything like that, but they may kind of reduce the amount of chow halls that are open just because there's not as big of a demand during the weekday when everybody's at work, everybody's doing you know operations and everything like that. So sometimes, just to kind of minimize things a little bit, they'll reduce the hours or reduce the amount of defects that are open during certain times, like the weekends or holidays. So usually when you enter the dining facility, there's usually someone there to greet you, like a desk or a table or something, someone to keep head count. Usually there's another soldier that's counting how many people are coming to the chow hall because they report up those numbers. And then there's usually another soldier or a civilian that checks ID cards and also takes payments from those that need to pay to eat at the dining facility. So for single soldiers that do not receive BAS, then they simply usually show their ID card. It used to be back in the day, a meal card holders, you know, kind of a thing where you had to show your meal card. But nowadays it's usually just your simple ID card and they scan it or they swipe it or whatever the case is to authorize that yes, the soldier is, you know, supposed to be on, you know, uh, the meal card kind of a thing where they just basically walk in and eat without having to pay. And then those that are like married or civilians or whatever, then they have to pay to be able to enter to go eat there. 
There's even some chow halls at some locations that actually have a drive through. So if you're lucky enough to have a drive through, you can also usually drive through and they have sometimes like some basic kind of like combos that they've put together for that day or whatever. And you pick the number one or the number two or whatever the case is and then pull up and you know, receive your food. I've actually even seen like now in Fort Carson, they actually have a food truck that's actually from the chow hall for soldiers that are busy out doing training or at a location that can't sneak away to get to the dining facility. So they have this food truck that's actually from the dining facility that still allows them to get chow hall food, but from like a, a food truck. So before we talk about the price of the food, let's talk about the difference of BAS, the basic allowance for subsistence. So all soldiers get BAS technically, all right? There's, I've had this conversation before about how you know, I say that single soldiers eat for free, whereas married soldiers that are receiving BAS, they get paid extra to, you know, kind of eat off post or use that money to eat in the chow hall if they wish. Some people argue saying that, no, you don't eat for free, they take that money out of your paycheck. So let me really quickly and kind of simply try to explain that. And you can leave that to your interpretation if you feel like, yes, you get paid, but then they take it back. I don't know. Let me try to explain this though. So all soldiers receive their base pay, right? So you have your base pay, whatever that is based on your rank and everything like that. And then any additional stuff like airborne pay or language pay or whatever, right? Your base pay. But then technically everybody by default gets paid BAS, that basic allowance for subsistence. But only those authorized to get paid BAS get to keep it because then it automatically takes it back out of your paycheck if you are not. If you're a single soldier, it shows up on your pay stub or your LES to show that yes, you receive your base pay, you also receive BAS, but then it shows a deduction that took that BAS back out. So it didn't at all affect your base pay, right? That money that got taken out didn't come out of your base pay, it came out of money that they gave you and then just took it right back. So in some cases, some people feel that no, you have to pay for those meals. Uh, and me personally, it, it's maybe just your own opinion or whatever, my own opinion, whatever. I feel like if you never really got that money, they gave it to you, took it back before it even hit your bank account, you never got paid that money. So your meal is free. Now, as far as the price for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, that can vary. I think it changes from time to time based on the economy or whatever the case is. But to give you a little bit of idea, it is still really cheap. It's usually like something like $3 and something cents or whatever for breakfast. For lunch is like $5 and something cents or something like that. And then for dinner, it's usually between four and $5. So it's usually anywhere you know, between $3 and $5, somewhere in there for either breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So it is, it is really cheap, especially for the amount of food that you might get. At the dining facilities, you have the option to either dine in or get a takeout or a to-go plate. You just like this little styrofoam thing, you fill it with the food or whatever, and then just walk out and leave. Maybe you got a mission going on, you got things going on that you're too busy to be able to sit down and eat and you just need a to-go plate to take with you. Typically based on policy, civilians though, however, are not allowed to take to-go plates or to kind of grab food and go. I don't know if that's to prevent them from buying really cheap food for somebody else that's not authorized to eat in the dining facility. I don't know what the case is, but Typically that's the case during this COVID-19 thing. They may kind of flex on that. Also installations may flex on that based on policies, but the common policy is that civilians are not allowed to do to-go plates and they must dine inside. But soldiers can do either one they wish. They can dine in or they can choose to take a to-go plate. But whether you're dining in or you're taking a to-go plate, you have several options as far as your choice of foods. Typically you have the main lines that are broken down into two categories, that being the main line and short order. So mainline is typically your more healthier food, maybe your more common food, things like maybe meatloaf, maybe it's spaghetti or pasta or whatever. Uh, you have steak sometimes, lobster, shrimp, right? Because they do have some really nice food sometimes. So the mainline is typically either like the healthier food or the more common type of food, that sort of thing that you'll find in the mainline. Usually it's the, the main dish, whatever that dish is for the day. Maybe you're coming in for dinner and dinner that day is like meatloaf and maybe one other thing or something like that, that you can choose from. And then they have like some sides, like maybe some mashed potatoes or uh, you know some kind of other type of side dish that's usually there at that main area. Then you have your short order. Your short order is basically your fast food style type of food. Pizza, hamburgers, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, those kind of things. And then also sides as well. So like French fries, onion rings, whatever. So you choose from whichever one of those you want. So that usually has your main part of the dish as well as some sides that are usually served to you. It's not like a help yourself kind of a thing. Usually it's something either a civilian or a army cook is serving to you in specific portions. So they give that to you, put it onto your plate. Maybe, like I said, if you're dining in, you usually have like a tray with a plate and silverware and everything that you grab from another station on your way in. If you're getting it to go, it's like in a styrofoam kind of container. So you tell them what it is you want, then they put it on your plate. From there, you usually move to some other kind of side areas. Usually they have things like a salad bar, some fruit. They have maybe some other side dish stuff. Sometimes they have sandwich bars to where you can make your own sandwich or they have someone there that makes a sandwich for you. 
So for those of you that might be like vegetarians or something like that, you might be skipping a lot of the main things inside the main food area and going over to like these salad bars or something like that to get some food that's, you know, within the areas of your diet. For vegan, I really couldn't tell you. I don't really know all the ins and outs for like people who are vegan, so I really couldn't tell you how well they are able to accommodate that type of lifestyle for your dietary needs or whatever, but maybe, possibly. But those side areas are usually help yourself kind of a thing, right? If you wanna get some salad, you're making your own salad or other things that are there, the fruit, you're picking out the fruit that you wanna grab. Those ones are usually a help yourself kind of a thing where the main areas are you know, served to you by civilians or cooks. There are also a wide variety of drinks and everything too. You usually have like fountain drinks for like soda or sports drinks or whatever. And then you also have like tea or water or maybe some bottled items, maybe sometimes Red Bull sometimes in the chow hall or whatever, or uh, other juices, you know, that you can get. They don't have alcohol, so don't expect to maybe for dinner get like a beer or something like that. They may in some cases have the non-alcoholic beer. If you really just like the taste of beer, then you might have some O'Doul's in the, in the fridge area or something like that, but there's not gonna be any alcohol. Once you've received your food, there's a seating area. Usually they have large tables and then also small tables. So it doesn't matter if you're eating by yourself or you're eating with a large group, they usually can accommodate, you know, fairly large groups or small groups or just individuals or whatever. And it's really to see yourself. You just kind of look for an open spot or whatever, you and your buddy or you by yourself or whatever, and look for where there's open chairs and take a seat. There's also usually like TVs inside there. So usually it's like playing the news, sometimes sports playing on in there. So you're allowed to talk, right? That's only like in basic training or AIT or whatever, they're kind of maybe restrictive on that. Once you're in your regular permanent duty station or whatever, and you're eating at the chow hall there, it's fine. So you can have conversation with each other while you're eating and everything. Once you are done eating, usually there's somewhere where you put your trays with all the food and everything like that. Maybe it's like a window that's on a conveyor belt or just an area that you just put it there and someone grabs it and puts it off to the side for it to go to the dishwashers or whatever. You don't like leave it on your table. There's no waitress or waiter or anybody coming around to collect up your food or to offer you more or whatever like that. It's just you sit down, you eat when you're done, you pick it up and you take it somewhere to drop it off. I've gotten a common question of people asking, can you go back for seconds? Is it all you can eat? All that kind of a thing. Not really. I mean, you can easily go back for like seconds, like a salad bar or some of those other ones that are like a help yourself kind of a thing. Also in those little areas, they also have desserts as well. And you can probably help yourself to like multiple desserts if you really wanted to. The main areas probably get a little bit trickier. Um, some places may allow it. Most places usually no. It's kind of like a, you get your food and then you eat it and go kind of a thing, not come back for seconds. You could probably cheat the system and maybe slip back through the line and go back through and get another hamburger or whatever. But uh, for the most part, it's not an all you can eat buffet style thing. So there you go. Hopefully that explains a lot of things about the chow hall, probably not everything. And I probably can't fit it in there. I probably don't know what else you want to know. So if you want to help me out and you have some questions about the chow hall, the dining facility, the defect, whatever you want to call it, drop some comments down below and I'll do my best to try to help you out or other viewers that maybe have some experience in the army and being in the chow hall can maybe, you know, give you a little bit of insight or answer some of your questions. For those veterans out there, I'd love to know what your thoughts were on your time in the army and what you thought about the chow hall, the dining facility. Maybe leave those down in the comment section as well. For me personally, uh, for like the first five years in the army, I pretty much always ate in the chow hall for the most part. Um, and then I, I think that kind of burnt me out of the chow hall. So then the rest of my army career, I either, either didn't eat in the chow hall at all or very limited. And I just, you know, ate out or got food, you know, for myself to make. If there are additional things you want to know maybe about the United States Army, you can hit me up through social media. I got some links down in the description box. Also down in the description box is the link to the Chaos Army Discord channel. So if you want to hit up the Discord channel, we've got an amazing community over there of individuals that are interested in joining the Army, some who've already been in the Army or are currently in the Army. So you can hit them up, make new friends, learn about the Army, ask questions, all that kind of stuff. Check out the link down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, maybe think about sharing the video, but at a minimum, at least hit that thumbs up for me because you're awesome and I know you really want to. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Christopher Chaos and I'll see you next time. See you.